Hey there, and now I'll talk about Zugzwang. Now, I know that this might sound like a very weird word, but actually we already studied this idea of Zugzwang. The main idea is to put your opponent in a position on which playing worsens the position. Normally, playing is great because we can improve our pieces, but sometimes the fact that we have to play is losing or worsening our position. When we analyze this position and we analyze the pawn ending that was drawn, here we already know the technique to draw, which is to oppose kings. That's why here we play king to f1 is important. The point is that after king to e3 we play king to e1, or after king to g3 we would play king to g1. And here after check, king to f1, here we could say that black is in Zugzwang. Because if black plays, the only way to defend the pawn is by playing king to f3, and this would end the game in a stalemate. And in fact, if here it was white to play, white would also be in Zugzwang. The point is that after playing king to g2, we play king to e2 and we promote. So if it was white to play here and white could just pass his move, then black would have to play king to f3 and end the game in a stalemate. That's why we can call this specific position of mutual Zugzwang, because the side who has to play is the one worsening his or her position. Also, when we analyze pawn endings, I spoke about the idea of triangulation. Here, if black plays king to e3, after king to e1, we get a similar position. That's why here it would be great for black to pass his turn and make white play. That's why here black played king to f5, with the idea of playing king to e5 and king to e4, as happened in the game after king to g1, king to e5. And the point is that after king to f1, king to e4, we get the similar position, but it is white to play. That's why this position is at Zugzwang for white. For instance, after king to e1, king to e3, king to f1, f2, now we don't advance the pawn with check and we win the game. So the main point of triangulation is to put the opponent in Zuzwang. Let's take a look at another example. Here in this position, black played the move b5, which looks like a very logical move because this pawn cannot be moved, otherwise black would take the knight on d5. And here, surprisingly, the players agreed to a draw. And if black had continued the game after king to c3 and taking on c4, taking on c4, here black had the very strong a6. First of all, the king cannot move anywhere because the king is tied up protecting the knight. And after the knight moves to any square, let's say to e3, black would simply get this pawn. And also after knight to e6, this pawn will also fall. That's why this would be easily winning for black. And after the move b5, we get a similar idea that after taking on b5 with check, this knight would fall. That's why after this very seemingly passive move a6, white would be in Zugzwang and black would be winning the game. I also analyzed some positions on which a rook can hold the position against a queen, but let me tell you that this is not always the case. In fact, those are rather the exceptions. Here in this position, white continued with the move rook to f4 that we'll analyze later. So black has a huge material advantage and white's main idea would be to create some kind of fortress to avoid black's king from coming there and attacking white's king. But white actually has very few moves here because after the move rook to c5, black would give a check and win the rook. And similarly after rook to a5, black would give another check and win the rook. And if white moves the king, then black actually has a threat, which is to take the rook, which is the simplest way to convert this advantage. So whenever a stronger side has a material advantage, the stronger side can give some of that material in order to convert into another winning ending. And here, after taking on f5 and taking on f5, first of all, we don't even need to calculate if these two pawns against three pawns is winning or not, because here black would just pick another pawn. That's why this is going to be an easy win with a two pawn advantage. With that in mind, an idea to protect that rook would be to play the move king to f4 in order to take and not lose the pawn. But here, black has many ideas. One of them that I like is to play the move king to d3 and again, limiting white's options. The rook cannot move again because black would pick it up. And if the king moves, then we take the rook. 
For instance, after king to g3, we just take the rook and we win this ending. Here white might still try f4, but we see that black's king is much more active. For instance, after king to e4, if we try to defend the pawn, we just play f5, and if white tries to defend, then we play the move king to e3. And actually here we have another tuxwang in a pawn ending because white's king has to move, and then we just pick up another pawn. And the game continuation was even simpler because after the move rook to f4, black played the move queen to b8. This is one of the greatest advantage of the queen, that it can maneuver all over the board quite easily. And here it is quite direct because any move by the king, black would just pick up the rook. And if g5, then we just take and the rook is still pinned. That's why black would win easily. So first of all, we already saw this idea of Tsukzwang. But now here we just studied different cases and not only king and pawn endings. This might be a very important resource, particularly whenever we want to break a fortress.